As the year 1955 began, Lockheed Aircraft Corporation had designed, built, and delivered to the armed forces more than 6,000 jet, fighter, and trainer aircraft. Of this total, the trainers accounted for nearly 3,800 planes, including Air Force T-33s and Navy TV-2s. As these aircraft piled up tens of thousands of flying hours, Lockheed service representatives, working directly with personnel of operational commands, obtained information for improving the design. Constantly they probed to find how service and maintenance could be simplified, and most important of all, how safety, reliability, and performance could be bettered. Based on this research and a study of operational records, a demonstrator model of an all-new jet trainer was built with the company's own funds. This airplane's basic improvements, in comparison with the TV-2, included newly designed air intake ducts, offering maximum efficiency with respect to boundary layer removal and ram air recovery, and wing slats, which ensure excellent stall and low-speed flight characteristics. These are free-floating and require very little maintenance. A one-piece windshield provides a broader view, and the one-piece canopy is wider and higher for increased headroom. Both cockpits were widened three to four inches to increase working space and comfort, and the rear seat was raised six inches to place the instructor's eye level 16 inches above the cockpit sills. On takeoff and landing, the new cockpit and canopy design assures excellent aft seat vision and permits the instructor to monitor the student's movements more closely. To compensate for the increased area of the new canopy and to improve the spin characteristics, the horizontal stabilizer and vertical fin were raised 20 inches. The span of the stabilizer was increased 12 inches, adding 4 and 3 tenths square feet of surface. Flight tests proved the effectiveness of the wing slats. Actuated by aerodynamic forces, they provide positive lateral control for low-speed maneuvers. The slats open at angles of attack from 8 to 10 degrees. In level flight and at negative angles of attack, they are fully closed. The wing slats, enlarged dorsal and improved stabilizer, enhanced the airplane's spin and recovery characteristics. On landing, the enlarged canopy gives excellent visibility to the instructor for observing the student's actions as he makes his approach. In this configuration, the airplane was taken on an extensive flight demonstration tour to Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps training bases. In the latter part of 1954, Navy interest in the new trainer increased and the modifications needed to adapt it to carrier operation were developed and tested. The fuselage was strengthened in the areas of the catapult and arresting hook and overall beef up included redesign of the skin, longerons and bulkheads. The wing was strengthened through design changes in the front, intermediate, rear and auxiliary beams and the beam panels and ribs. A rugged new gear was tested under simulated carrier landing loads. The main gear can absorb an ultimate sinking rate of 20.8 feet per second to meet Navy specifications for a limit sinking rate of 18 feet per second. This is double the rate of the TV-2 landing gear. To prove the adequacy of the nose gear damper, shimmy tests were conducted at speeds reaching 130 knots. The arresting hook is designed as a combination retract cylinder, shock absorber, and hold-down device. On a runway simulator, an exhaustive series of tests led to a design for minimizing hook bounce. This trainer will accept alternate engines, the improved Allison J33A24 with 6,100 pounds of thrust, or the Pratt & Whitney J48P8A rated at 7,250 pounds of thrust. 
The first T2V1 test article, developed in cooperation with the Bureau of Aeronautics, was ready for flight in three months, a full year in advance of the prototype production airplane. It is essentially an all-new airplane and meets all training command requirements for advanced single-engine instrument training. The automatic wing slats were redesigned to run the entire length of the wing, another factor contributing to the improvement of low-speed characteristics. In addition to the new full-vision electrically powered canopy, a combination anti-glare shield and windscreen, roller-mounted and spring-loaded to the flight position, protects the rear cockpit from the slipstream if the canopy needs to be jettisoned. Carefully reworked to Buair requirements, the instrument panel follows Navy standard grouping. The tachometer and temperature indicators are on the left, the airspeed indicator and altimeter to their right, with the B1A attitude indicator in the center. Flight controls duplicated in both cockpits are mechanically linked. The ailerons are hydraulically boosted, the large area rudder provides positive control, and the elevator has an increased angle of throw for better low speed characteristics. Through the single point pressure fueling system, the airplane can be completely fueled to capacity in less than five minutes. From this planned view of the tanks and cells, a highly simplified layout is presented to illustrate the sequence of fuel transfer. By pressure from tip tanks to fuselage, by gravity to the wing cells, and by booster pumps to the engine. From takeoff to landing, the system functions automatically without pilot surveillance. However, in the event of uneven feed from either tip tank, the pilot can restrict the flow from the lighter tank until balance is restored. If necessary, the pilot can selectively dump fuel from either tip tank. The fuel from both tanks can be dumped very rapidly. A steerable nose wheel makes T2V1 ground maneuvering rapid and positive. The airplane's turning radius and ease of control indicate very satisfactory ground handling characteristics. At a combat weight of 16,705 pounds and with the Allison J33A24 engine at military power, the ground run is 1,880 feet and the trainer clears a 50-foot obstruction at 3,040 feet. This is without benefit of boundary layer control. Maximum rate of climb at sea level is 5,500 feet per minute. In 11 and 1 tenth minutes, it can climb to 35,000 feet and having attained that altitude, can still climb at 1,700 feet per minute. At a combat weight of 14,730 pounds, the trainer's sea level speed is 485 knots and its combat ceiling is 45,000 feet. The range of the T2V1 with reserves is 785 nautical miles. In a typical instrument training mission, for example, the trainer is capable of flying non-stop from Corpus Christi to San Antonio, to San Angelo, to Waco, to Houston, and back to Corpus Christi for a total of 751 nautical miles. The wing flap is a completely redesigned slotted hinge type to facilitate installation of a boundary layer control system. This system, the first of its kind in a production airplane, induces 5% of engine compressor bled air along the flaps at 1290 feet per second. This causes the normal airflow to hug the flap rather than burble when the airplane is at slow or near stalling speeds. The effect is to reduce stalling speeds by 8 knots and increase the lift coefficient 18% at maximum power. This increase is capable of lifting 1,000 pounds of the plane's gross weight in catapult takeoffs. The new trainer meets CVL Class 48 operational demands in all respects. Its maximum landing and catapult stresses will not exceed flight deck strength. Its landing weight does not exceed CVL crane capacity, and it will fit on CVL elevators without exceeding lift capacity and without need for folding wings.
To correct an undesirable radiation pattern, the UHF antenna system was greatly improved by consolidating several antennas in one. Offering an unusually flexible speed range for a jet airplane, the T2V1 can be flown safely within the speed range of many small propeller-driven airplanes. The action of the automatic full-span wing slats helps make possible the airplane's extremely slow speed without danger of stalling or entering an inadvertent spin. With the newly designed aileron boost system, the airplane has excellent lateral stability in straight and level flight without sacrifice of maneuverability. Even with minimum stick forces, it offers a good rate of roll. In an unusual turnaround demonstration, only 55 and a half seconds elapsed from liftoff to touchdown, showing the plane's ability to fly at acute angles of bank, close to stall, and at low altitude. This also demonstrates its phenomenal low speed control characteristics. Extremely short takeoff and landing runs permit operation from fields normally restricted to propeller driven aircraft. of 12,685 pounds, the ground run is 1,820 feet. And with boundary layer control in operation, this is shortened to 1,720 feet. At the Naval Air Test Facility in Yokern, California, a program of carrier suitability tests was undertaken to finalize the design of the airplane's carrier equipment. This slow motion record of an in-air arrested landing demonstrates the capability of the nose gear to accept severe tail rising conditions. Photographed at normal camera speed, the airplane is recorded as it executes an 18 foot per second sink rate landing. A performance that demonstrates its capability for use in basic as well as advanced training. With its catapult and arresting equipment, it will operate from CVL Class 48 carriers to provide students with initial jet experience aboard ship. The unusual versatility and ruggedness of the advanced T2V1 thus permits it to be used early in the flight training curriculum and it may be employed for fleet carrier jet transition training. In addition to the navigational mission for which it was designed, the T2V1 may be used for periodic instrument training, combat readiness training, and carrier to shore utility application. In the future, it may find use in tactical training, carrying 50 caliber gun pods, rocket pods, air to air missiles, or ECM equipment. Fleet type fire control systems can be installed to permit economical all weather fighter and attack training. Also, it may be used as a photo reconnaissance airplane, and with the addition of banner cable controls and the removal of the rear seat units, 
it can be converted into a high altitude, high speed, tow target airplane. The T2V1, a rugged, dependable new training airplane offering the high speed and precise control characteristics that give Navy pilots dependable transition to modern jet fighters.